This month we have news relating to the Pine Buds Pro, Star 64 progress, and new Pine Time developments. This is the video version of the community update, which is more of a summary, so for more info about all these topics, check out the blog post version. Also thanks to Lucas, Mara, Clover, Ben, Calc Programmer, and others for contributing content to this community update. Also check out my channel, Pete's Loving Nerd, for more open source related videos. We are holding the community Q&A this month on November 25th at 8pm UTC, and this is your chance to ask us questions live on IRC, Matrix, Telegram, and Discord. We will be streaming the Q&A session on YouTube, Peertube, as well as the Discord live stage, and this is our last Q&A of the year, so we hope to see all of you there. We're also reworking the main Pine64 website, and this new website will place a greater focus on the community aspect of Pine64. The goal here is to place an emphasis on individual community projects, this blog, the Pine Talk podcast, in-person meetups, virtual hangouts, and everything else you can think of that is directly related to this community. Everything related to Pine64 hardware will be moved to the Pine Store's website, which will also be receiving an overhaul some point later in the year. We can't wait to show it off. Pine64EU is having a full restock this week with PinePhone, PinePhone Pro, PineBook Pro, Pine Power, Pine Time, and Pine Soul V2, and various accessories available again. And this stock will last until Christmas. The Pine Soul V2 will be immediately available on the day of the restock, and then more stock will be added on November 20th, November 25th, November 30th, December 5th, and December 10th. Lastly, the COVID situation in China is currently making production and logistics difficult, so keep this in mind as this month's announcements are made. Release and delivery dates may change without warning due to this situation. News Flash is a new section of the community update which focuses on highlighting shorter stories that would previously have not made their way onto the monthly update. These stories will include small Pine Store announcements, community projects, partner projects, and software developments that would otherwise not get covered. Community member Andrew, going by the handle Rushan on Twitter, created a light attachment for the Pinesol V2, allowing you to work on projects in dim environments. The ring attachment is filled at the base of the tip shaft where it meets the body of the iron. The ring features two little LEDs, which are powered directly from the Pinesol. A small online store called Not Your Average Store offers a custom DIY Pinesol power bank with a powerful LIPO 14.8 volt battery. This power bank includes a small hole that the pine sole can be placed in when on the road. The store also includes information about all the parts you need to build your own. Calc Programmer, the lead developer of the OpenRGB project, has modified the PinePhone keyboard case to include a RGB backlight alongside other improvements. And files for the PCB and code are already available, so if you have the know-how and you understand that this will build your warranty, this is a very cool project to embark on. In software news, the Quartz 64 Model A now has the ability to output DSi video, and apparently touch display functionality works, but it is a bit flaky. This good news comes from Diesel Nutjob on Discord. Lastly, the Rochambeau retro game console, capable of housing Pine64 SBCs, is making its appearance in the Pine Store in the coming weeks. If you're into retro gaming, then the case features a fully functional on and off and reset switch, a SATA disconnector, IO pass-through, and you can pick up a pair of matching controllers and a 128GB SSD that imitates a cart. The Pine Buds Pro were revealed in an April Fool's joke earlier this year, and they are a pair of wireless in-ear earbuds with ambient and environmental noise cancellation, as well as transparency mode and long battery life. These buds were designed to just work for those who want a pair of wireless earbuds while simultaneously offering tinkerers everything they need to play with the device. The Cradle also has built-in UART, which is used for firmware flashing. In time, we'll see community firmware that allows for altering touch controls and inclusion of new features. Most importantly, custom firmware will allow you to flash custom sound signatures adjusted for your individual ear canal, and there will be two SDKs available on launch for the wiki, both of which have been tested and known to work. Over the past two months, the buds have been CE, CE Red, and FCC certified and are now ready for launch, and we expect them to be available in the Pine Store on December 2nd for $69. We are really pleased to see the positive reaction to last month's announcement of the AUX64, and to recap last month's announcement, the AUX64 is a tiny RISC-V single board computer of 64 megabytes of RAM and capable of running Linux or RTOS. In other words, it can be used either as a microcontroller or a tiny PC. At the core of the board, you'll find a BL808 SoC with three cores, a 64-bit RISC-V core, and a 32-bit RISC-V core, and a low-power RISC-V core. We currently expect the little board to be available on November 25th, and on launch, two versions will be available. The first of which will sell for $6, and the latter will sell for $8. 
The first SDK is going to be geared towards RTOS development, while the latter towards Linux development. Linux has already been booted successfully on the AUX64 with Marek managing to get a build route up and running earlier this month. The RTOS SDK will be available on launch and we cannot wait to see someone pick up bare metal development. We hope to have Star 64 available today, but some last minute production issues have pushed the release date back to December 5th. Please note that the state may be pushed back further due to the COVID situation in China. In case you missed it, the Star 64 is a RISC-V single board computer with a Star 5 JH7110 64-bit RISC-V CPU sporting quad Sci-5 FU740 cores locked at 1.5 GHz. The SoC is equipped with BXE432 from Imagination Technologies and the IO is similar to the Quartz 64 as is the general layout of the SBC which follows our Model A form factor. It's fitted with a USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, a PCIe slot, as well as two native gigabit ports. Linux 4 is already in a good shape, and you can expect to see significant progress made on the platform in the coming months. On launch, the Star 64 will be available in two hardware configurations of 4 and 8 gigabytes of RAM, respectively, for $70 and $90. Expect announcements of software support from two well-established projects soon after the hardware launches. The Pine Deal product range has been long in development and has been pushed back on more than two occasions for a variety of internal reasons. I am therefore glad to announce that the first and arguably most important of the Pineo ecosystem will be available in the Pine Store this week. The Pineo Gateway will be available later this month. Pineo now has a default OS based on Armbian, which supports the Lore Gateway, and we will also have a factory test image for those who want to tinker with it. The Pineo Gateway is based on the Pine64 LTS in a Rack 2287 from Rack Wireless, and the documentation for the Gateway on our wiki is already very extensive, so you can expect other Pineo hardware such as the USB adapter with CH341 chip to follow soon. Last month, just the day after the October Community Update, Finitime released Update 1.11, which brings the ability to upload resource packages containing data. JF wrote a dedicated Affinitime 1.11 blog post which I encourage you to read. To be specific, this is the first release that allows access to external memory for holding data in software that is not part of the core firmware. This new feature allows users to upload new content to their Pine Time and add new features such as watch faces. Since this new release, JF has also spotted at least two pull requests that build on top of the new resource feature, including a new watch face called Horizon and a new gallery application that displays pictures, QR codes, and text files. We're really happy to see contributors leveraging this new feature in their contributions. As of today, there are two companion apps that allow you to upload additional packages, including Amazfish and ITD. But we hope to see more companion apps support this feature in the near future. So that's it for this month, and have a good rest of your month.